Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be installing Windows 11 onto our Chromebook. So let's get started. Now, the first thing we need is a Chromebook that is already unlocked. So it will accept the installation of operating systems like Linux and Windows. And to do that, I have a video up on the top left, which I installed Windows 10 onto this same exact Chromebook. Now I can't reproduce the steps anymore because I already unlocked it. So you're gonna have to refer to that video on how to get the firmware installed and the BIOS and everything else to get it up and running. Now, installing Windows 11 is not just straightforward like it would as of Windows 10. That's because it requires TPM, which is something we don't have on our Chromebooks. So I'm gonna be showing you how to bypass that so it will still allow Windows 11 to install. Now say what you may about Windows 11, I have my thoughts about it as well, but one thing they did get right is the optimization on Windows 11 on weaker CPUs like this. Now the Chromebook that I am currently using is an Acer Chromebook 14 model number CP3431 with an Intel Celeron of N3160. Got a quad core of 1.6 gigahertz and turbo boost I think up to two gigahertz, four gigs of RAM and, and 16 gigabytes of storage, which is not much. That's like the minimum that you can have to get Windows 11 working. Like as I was saying before, it is really, really optimized. It is extremely responsive comparing to what the specs I have on this computer. It actually feels like a new computer. And if you're comparing this to either Windows 10 or to any Linux operating system that I installed, which I was mainly using Galium OS on the Chromebook, it is very responsive and I was able to play or do anything that I need to. To show you guys before I jump into formatting this again, as you can see, it's a clean desktop. And if I pop right into Task Manager, and sorry, I don't have a capture on this. This does have an output, but it's weird to capture on it. So I'd rather just try to do it like this. As you can see right now, it's using the CPU. Oh, it's actually turbo boosted 2.2 gigahertz. It's using all quad cores, four gigs of RAM. It's only running on a fresh boot of 1.9 or 1.8 uh, store gigs of RAM used. And let me show you guys what my hard drive is. I did have to do some special method to reduce the state space of the installation. This way I get about four gigabytes free. Now, in this case, you see only 3.47. That is because I've used this for a couple of days browsing the web and stuff like that. So I have cached used, but once you follow my steps, you should have about four gigs free, which allows for only a handful of programs that you can use. Even if I show you this cleanup, I mean, you might see some cache space, but that's about it. And as you can see, I'm just navigating through this computer and moving stuff around, getting stuff going. It runs really, really smooth and it's very responsive. Now, I can't current, I mainly use this computer just for uh, remote desktop, video browsing, web browsing, a um, couple other stuff that mainly your Chromebook can do. But with Windows 11, it allows you to install Office products or Steam if you got lower end games that you wanna play. Now again, 16 gigs of storage is not much. Uh, if you have something with 32, you would definitely be able to uh, work off that. 16 gigs only allows you such a limited amount of storage free to install some programs that you want. Your experience might vary because you might have a better CPU or less CPU, but as of this current setup with this Acer Chromebook 14, it works great. I think I'm gonna keep it on this for quite some time just to see how it goes. And yes, you can if you want to um, activate the Windows 11 with the Windows 10 key. Anyway, I'm gonna show you guys how to install this now. First thing you need to do is pop into your BIOS. I'm gonna hit escape key just to get to the boot menu. And in there, you wanna boot up on your USB 3 disk drive. Now, I'm not gonna show you where you could get your Windows 11 ISO. You could just Google it. You'll find tons of places with it. Even Windows Media Creation Tool, you get Windows 11 off it. So. Just follow those steps, go online and figure out where you could get the Windows 11 ISO. Now, I am using Ventoy, which is an ISO bootloader, which allows me to boot ISOs instead of having to burn it into the USB drive. So I'm gonna leave a link to that guide as well. And in my version of um, Ventoy, I'm actually using Medicat. And Medicat is also a creation tool that allows you to help boot repairs. It's like an IT's toolbox. The version that I got is the latest version, which is 22,000, the version number. And that's the one that I'm gonna be booting into. As soon as you boot into it, it's not gonna allow you to install. Uh, you could go through the prompts and it's just gonna say your computer is not equipped with whatever, it's not gonna be able to install. 
compatibility, whatever, etc., etc. So we need to do some steps to bypass that. And so before you get into anywhere, you see this Windows 11 setup menu. Uh, first thing you need to do is hit Shift F10. Since it's a Chromebook, it doesn't have the F keys. You're just gonna count through the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So Shift F10. Command prompt opens, and here you're going to do reg edit. And in reg edit, you're going to know, also notice that because I'm using this Chromebook, the mouse does not work. You could stick in a USB mouse and get it to work, or you could just man it and use the keyboard. That's what I'm going to be using, which is the keyboard. I'm just expanding down the prompts, uh, going over to hotkey local machine, and then going into system, and then going into setup. Now in here, there's gonna be a few things. We don't have to worry about it. Highlight setup and add a new key. And in there, we're gonna call lab config. So now we have the lab config right down there. We're gonna also add a new D word, 32 bit. So that one is gonna be called bypass TPM check. Just like that. I'm going to leave this right in the description down below. And we're going to add another one while we're in the middle of adding stuff. New D word 32 bit. And it's going to be called by pass secure boot check. All right. And now we're going to have to edit those to be number one. So right now it says zero at the end. So we're going to do alt modify and we're gonna change that to one. Let's highlight the next one, hit Alt, go to Edit, Modify, and press one on that. And now you should see two, these two with the one, and we're done. We could just close down these boxes and continue on to the next prompt. Now you see these underscore letters, it says next, but it has an underscore. All you have to do is just hit Alt and N, or Alt and I, to get through those prompts. So you don't really need a mouse. I was. Windows always had this feature for years. If you're if you program since like the 90s, that was one of the things you could put in. You put an ampersand in front of the word, it'll put that underline, and hitting Alt and that letter would press that button for you. So here we go. I don't have a key, so I'm going to hit Alt I. Now you could select Home or Pro. It's up to you. I installed Pro. If you install Home, you might be able to get a little bit more storage out of it. I just like to install Pro. That gives me the ability to run remote desktop as a server, and then I could just pop into this computer without running into issues. Uh, I am gonna accept. And at this point, it would have already stopped you. It would have said like, your hardware doesn't work. I'm gonna go to custom because I need to format the old partitions. And I'm just gonna tab through all this and hit Alt D to delete. Alt D, Alt D to delete. Alt-D to delete, and then Alt-D to delete that. There you go. Now I have zero, 14.7 gigabytes, which is a 16 gigabyte drive. Hit next on that, and that's it. It's gonna install. This takes about, oh, I think 20 minutes on this guy. Maybe 15 to 20 minutes to copy all the files over. I'll jump into the point when this is all configured. We'll go forward from there because there's still a few things that we need to get the mouse working, the keyboard working, audio working, and a few other things. So I'm gonna let this go. All right, here we are on our first boot. Now, I don't have um, a mouse yet, so we're gonna just manually go through all these steps like we normally would. Here we go, United States. That is right with the US. I'm gonna skip the setting keyboard layout. I'm also gonna skip this step and say I don't have internet and continue with limited setup. This allows me to actually create a local user account I'm just hitting tab and spacebar. That's all I'm doing with these. So just be careful how you're navigating through everything. Hit tab, next, password, next, confirm password, next, secret questions. I'm just gonna name them randomly. So this way I could just get through these steps. Uh, I would probably wanna disable everything. So really it's just up to you. Just hit tab and space to unaccept everything. I missed one, but it's okay. So now it's going to boot right into your Windows 11. All right, we're all set up. Now the first thing I want to do here is 
get online because I didn't want to create the account before, but we can now since we have a local account. Jump into my Wi-Fi network so we can start downloading the drivers that we need for the touchpad and the mouse. Okay, now that the internet is working, the Windows key is actually the magnifying glass or the search button on your keyboard. So that's what I'm going to be using right now to get to Edge. And the first website we need to get to is called Coolstar, which is the same website you use to flash the firmware onto the Chromebook because it also supplies drivers for this touchpad. I don't like the fact that it has to ask all these questions in the beginning. Why can't I just start using it right away? Okay, Control L to get to the search bar. And we just need to go to coolstar.org and navigate over to Chromebooks. It's so much easier if you just plugged in the mouse. From here, I actually plugged in the mouse because it was getting a little annoying. I'm gonna choose the CPU that I got, which is N3160 and my model number. Now you have the touchpad and the audio drivers, which I am gonna download now. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to download this. And first thing I'm going to do is install the touchpad drivers because I can't be trying to use this without touchpad. So yes, I am going to allow that install. It's going to have all these. Install. Install that. Close. And now my touchpad is working. There you go. And same thing goes for audio. Just open the audio one that you just downloaded. It's going to go through the same install process and then you have your audio working. Okay, while that is installing, I'm gonna show you one thing. I'm just opening the file manager and this PC, look at this. I, don't, I only have 183 megabytes of space left over. There's like absolutely no space. And in order to resolve that, let me finish this install. So now that I only have 160 megabytes free, again, that is like not enough space to do anything. We're gonna right click on the start menu and go to Windows Terminal Admin. And with the terminal prompt enabled, this is what we're gonna do. Compact slash compact OS colon always. Let that run. And you're gonna start seeing this start to free up. So it's already got 653 free. If I do a F5, 676. It takes about like 10 minutes for the entire operating system to compress. And yes, it, you will lose a little bit of speed because you do have to uh, uncompress certain files for it to run. But for the lack there of space, this is highly recommended and almost needed if you are using a 16 gigabyte hard drive. If you're on a 32 gigabyte, I would still recommend it uh, for something this small and to save about three gigs or four gigs of space, it's worth it if you got a small hard drive. If you got like 256 or one terabyte or 512, that doesn't even matter because even if you compress it, you won't notice the difference. But on this, it's a huge chunk of difference. Watch, if I hit F5 again, there you go. I already got one gig free and it's doing the compression. Again, this is going to take about 10 to 15 minutes. And by the time this is all said and done, you should have about four gigs free of space. Okay, the compression is complete and the compression ratio is 1 to 1.821, uh, I'm getting about 2.5 gigabytes free, but once I reboot, it's actually gonna free up about like four maybe. So give or take with a grain of salt on how much you get back. I know that when I did it to this after the reboot, I should get back about four. This is about like right now, three gigabytes of free space, which is not as much as I had before. Anyway, that is it for me guys. Uh, I urge you to give it a try if you guys are planning to use your older Chromebooks for something other than a Chromebook and if you want to install like Microsoft applications or Steam games that are on the older base generations, by all means, give this a try. It's actually very responsive and you'll be surprised how well it actually works. As far as the operating system itself, like I said, I got my thoughts about it, but the, it, it is optimized. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, Hack till it hurts.